Hi, it's Trixie here, and I just wanted to take some time out today to talk to you about a fantastic topic. It's called Raising Your Personal Frequency, and I recently did a conference call on this, and I got such a great response from the conference call that I thought I would just bring it to you in a short video. So hopefully you have a pen and paper so that you can take down some notes, but the reason that this kind of came across for me is man, the world is in a tough place. And there's so much negativity and there's so much news outside of our circles happening in our world. And then we've got our own circles of relationships and, and drama, as some people call it, and things that are happening within our families and our friends and our business associates and all those kinds of things that can cause some negativity. And so many times people ask me, well, how do you stay positive? Is that real? Are those just posts on Facebook or are you really that happy? And I have to work at it, but I've learned the skills to work at it. And I'm a work in progress. I'll probably be working on this for the rest of my life. But I'm so glad that I learned about our bodies having our own energy. And I can usually feel somebody's energy when I get around them. And um, it's going to be either negative or positive. But there are different levels of frequency and vibration that we give out. So I just wanted to talk to you uh, a little bit about that today. How you can change your thoughts for good responses and not reactions. For good responses and not reactions. So we'll talk about that. Uh, also, how to vent uh, your energy when it's negative and how to vent that. You don't stuff it, you vent it and discharge it. And then causing positive emotions inside of you will actually increase your vibrations. So we're going to go through 10 points, or excuse me, 12 points today and um, just kind of hopefully give you an idea of some areas that you can maybe start paying attention to or start changing or upgrading in your life. Number one, make conscious positive changes. So you have to do it on purpose. Perhaps things in your lifestyle, this might mean that you have to sit down and think for a little while. Pen and paper, sit down and kind of just analyze a little bit uh, about your life, how it goes. It's funny, uh, the people who are close to me say, Trixie, you're always analyzing everything or you're such a thinker. And I am, I actually take time to think each day. I think it's very productive. Um, but so take a look at what your lifestyle looks like. And uh, if there's any negativity going on in the actual lifestyle that you lead, those things that you have control over. What about your beliefs? Are you doing things in your life that align with your beliefs, with your values? And if you're not, you're probably going to want to tweak those so that they come into alignment with what it is that you believe so that you're acting upon your beliefs as well. Think about your fears. What is it that you're fearing or afraid of? Or what causes trepidation? What causes anxiety for you? And, and think about those types of things because really those things aren't real. They're not real. And you know what? I could talk about fears all the, all the live long day. That's just a whole nother topic. But it, it really is things that we make up in our own mind about something that's coming of the unknown or um, just per, perhaps something that we're not sure of or we, we don't know how it's going to go down. So we tend to fear it or have anxiety about it. What about judgment? That'd be another area that I would have you take a look at. And this is something that I've done for years. It's something I've really, really had to work at. I think we all have to work at this as far as humans go. It comes naturally for us to, to judge other people, their looks, their, their actions, their words, those types of things. But how often are we actually reflecting on our own and, and tweaking and, and having that self-awareness of what we're doing and saying and how we're looking and those types of things. So you already know what needs to change. What I love about life coaches is that they don't sit there and tell you what you need to change. They ask you questions to pull it out of you because they know that you already have the answers. So let's dig deep and let's find out what those answers are. Number two, music can change your frequency. So I'm not going to tell you a specific kind of music because that wouldn't be the right thing. It's different for everyone. So uh, this, what I love about music is it actually crosses boundaries, boundaries that other things cannot cross. It, your ego does not resist music. 
Your ego doesn't really even exist when you're listening and, and absorbing with music. So pick what works for you. I actually went intentionally online and looked for some healing frequencies. There was about a three year period in my life that uh, I was really having some trouble, really struggling in my life. I was grieving. And a lot of things come along with, with grieving. And one of the things that I chose is healing frequencies. I actually paid to have these uh, frequencies downloaded to my phone so that I could just plug my ear set in and listen to them. And it's not really like normal music, how you would think music is. It's more like tones and uh, melodies and things like that. And it just kind of is going on in the background. So I'll even use that as I'm driving. It's not going to put you to sleep or anything like that, but it's a calming and it's uh, again, just kind of changing your own frequency as far as the music goes. I've also found uh, for long time, Christian music has really just nurtured my soul and, and made me just come alive and really feel. And more recently, I have found that country music does it for me. So I know that drives a lot of my family crazy, but uh, I love contemporary country music. And it just, when I'm driving down the road, I mean, it just feeds my soul. And that kind of works for me now that I live in Texas. So <laughs> pick what music works for you. Number three, spend time in nurturing places. You'd be so surprised at what your environment can do for your being. So hang around with positive, uplifting people. I think that if you um, thought about some folks right now, who would come to mind? Take them out to coffee. Take them to lunch. Um, spend some time on the phone with them. And, and just just kind of you know, not feed or suck off their energy, but but just kind of take in how are they and 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 what that that vibration is like. I got a wonderful text just yesterday that absolutely made my day. It made my week. She said, Trixie, my husband and I were driving down the road and we're doing this marriage thing where we're you know asking a hundred questions. And one of the questions on the sheet was think of someone that is just joy filled, that you just think about and you just think they're joy filled. And she said, both of them had my name come to mind. And so she texted me, which she didn't have to do that. Um, I'm glad she did because it meant a lot to me that 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 means a lot to me. And I thought, wow. That's a legacy. That's something I would love to leave behind. I want people to think of me that way and I want to live my life that way. I want me to think of me that way. So um, yes, surround yourself with those people. Places. Pick places that nurture you. And I will tell you, if you don't really have a place that you can go, you need to find one. Uh, someplace close to nature. For some reason, when you get close to nature in whatever aspect works for you, some people it's camping. Okay, not this girl, <laughs> but I found that I went out and I was weeding just the, my front part of my, um, of my flower bed. I was weeding that yesterday morning and I was like, I don't want to weed. I, you know, it's just so annoying. I, I got to get it done, whatever. And I thought, well, you know what? If I just take 15 to 20 minutes over the next couple of days and I just go out and I just pull those weeds out, I am going to feel so much better when I come in, pull into the driveway, look out my window, whatever. So I took that 15 to 20 minutes and as I was doing it, I mean, you could put earphones in or whatever. I chose not to. I just chose to think while I was weeding. And I always have a good conversation with myself. I get along with me. I actually think I'm really funny. <laughs> Laugh at all my jokes. But I just was in my own company and I was pulling those weeds and it, it was it was beautiful. I can't, can't really explain it, but I didn't hate it. And I thought, you know what? I'm not... I'm going to remember this so that when I go out to pull the weeds the next time, it's not going to be something that I'm going to dread. It's going to be something that I'm going to be happy about and that I'm going to look forward to. Uh, some people need to go for a walk or a hike in nature. Get near the ocean. Oh, when I was going through my grieving and I was healing, I got near the ocean as much as possible. For It just does something to me, that serene feeling. There might be some things that bring some calmness to you. So... Put those things around you. Put them in your area. You know, when I moved to Texas just a year ago, uh, one of the best pieces of advice that I got was when you get to your new place, put up all of your pictures on the walls and all of your things on the walls before you even ever unpack your boxes. One of the best pieces of advice that I got. 
I did that because I'm so kinetic and my and what how I feel really helps my mood and that sort of thing. So I put the things up on the wall. I've got a ton of, you know, believe and imagine and dream and <laughs> okay, I, I know again it drives my kids crazy. But and then pictures, pictures of my children, my inspirational pictures, pictures of my my past um, accomplishments and all of my books. I got all my books in the, the bookshelf. Just the things that would make me feel good and feel like I'm in place and orderly and, and that type of a thing. So that those types of things, the people, the places and the things that are nurturing to you will condition you and that will raise your vibration as well. Number four, anything inspiring. So media wise, like uh, books. Oh my goodness. Yes. I love self-help books. I love books on forgiveness. Oh, you guys, we really need this in our life, in our relationships, everything. I, I, I just cringe when I hear a friend or a loved one say, well, I'm not going to forgive them or they don't deserve my forgiveness or anything like that. I'm just like, oh, again, that's a whole nother workshop in itself. But forgiveness isn't for the person who has wronged you, my friend. Forgiveness is for you. It's for you to be free. And we've all been wronged. And some of us have been wronged more than others. But when you learn to truly supernaturally forgive, it's an amazing thing. And I'm not saying easy. I said amazing. So I have books upon books upon that. And I've, I've taught workshops on it. I've wrote, written a paper on it. Um, it's just, it's a topic that I think we all really need. So why not research it? Why not grab a hold of that for yourself and be free? Anything to do with healing, uh, I got books on or self-improvement, like I said, where, whether it's, you know, in your personal life or in your business life or in your family life, whatever. Also movies. I love movies like Remember the Titans, Secretariat, Facing the Giants. I like silly movies that make me laugh, like Overboard with Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. Oh, one of my all-time classic favorites. Um, you know, I love true stories, things like that. I try to stay away from, not always, but I try to stay away from things like the Hallmark Channel or, um, you know, I do not watch TV or sitcoms or any of that garbage or trash. I do not let that in my in my. Um, space. But, you know, whatever I can pull nuggets from, and believe me, nuggets are everywhere. I remember when I first moved down to, to Texas, I was like, all right, that's it. I got to get in shape. I'm, you know, I've got no excuses. And I was just like, man, I just need some kind of extra something. And I remembered the movie G.I. Jane. Now, don't judge me. I know it's a harsh movie. I know there's a lot of really tough stuff in that movie, but for whatever reason, it motivates me. It fires me up. I love seeing the scene in The Terminator where uh, it's like one of the first Terminators where she's working out and, and Linda, whatever her name is, is just working out, working out. She's working her body out. Well, G.I. Jane did that for me as well. And I was like, oh my gosh, I looked on Netflix. I looked on Amazon. I couldn't find it anywhere. And suddenly I looked on my TV listing. I didn't have TV before I moved to Texas. So this was new for me. So I looked at my TV listing and it was starting in 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, that's divine. I'm, I'm definitely watching it. And they played it two times in a row. So I will confess to you, I watched both, both series. <laughs> so there you go. I got a double shot of her. But um, watch the movies that motivate you or inspire you in the moment and in the place that you need it. Attend seminars. Seminars are worth your money. You are investing in yourself. There's a lot of free seminars that you can attend online. Tony Robbins is one of my absolute top favorites. I also like to um, go online to some different churches that I absolutely love. There are two up in Minnesota and one down here in Texas that I follow all the time. Their messages are spot on. I absolutely love them. Um, River Valley is, is one in Minnesota. Uh, Eagle Brook Church is in Minnesota and then Celebration Church down here in, in Texas. They have just amazing, powerful messages that always hit me where I need it. And when you're doing that for yourself, again, feeding your soul, feeding your mind, feeding yourself, you're raising your vibration. You are increasing your frequency. So attend those types of workshops and take advantage of those in your life. Number five is exercise. Now, this is kind of an obvious one, um, but pick something that you like. Don't dread your exercise. If you don't, if you're not a runner and you don't like running and you don't want to run or your knees hurt or whatever, 
Don't run, okay? I'm not saying that. Don't pick something that you don't love. So find something that you enjoy. And it doesn't have to be 10 hours. It doesn't even have to be an hour. Just some time. And you can even do increments throughout the day. Pick walking, running, rowing, elliptical, maybe lifting some weights, uh, riding a bike. You know, sometimes I just turn on the music and dance in my kitchen, okay? <laughs> I don't have any neighbors that can see him. Don't worry. Uh, only you and I know I'm a little crazy. But uh, it's, it's fun and it's a great workout. And what it does for you physically is it's getting oxygen to your brain and it raises your endorphins. And this is something that our bodies need on a regular basis. It's actually really good for your hormones as well. Uh, especially uh, ladies, for those of you getting up near 50 or beyond, we need that just to keep our bodies functioning properly. So try to do some small increments throughout the day. You know what it's going to produce? It's going to produce joy for you, most definitely. Number six, aromatherapy and color therapy. Now, you can just Google color therapy and look at what the different colors mean and then surround yourself with that, wear that, um, you know, just expose yourself to the colors that you need at that time. There's something to be said about that when you're seeing the colors, how it feels, how it works on your moods. Uh, but aromatherapy is something that I've really gotten into lately. If you've gone to my YouTube channel, go ahead and go there and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got several different videos on the essential oils. I use the line that's called Pure Essential Oils. You want to make sure you're using a good line, not one of those expensive brands, and certainly not anything synthetic. Um, so this is uh, the product that I use. Now I buy, this one's called Sharpen. And I use this during the day. I'm diffusing my diffuser right here. Um, I absolutely love it. It's a, it's a good diffuser. And I do sharpen during the day and then I do lighten at night because it's just a blend. And um, it again, it totally affects your moods. I also have a necklace that I often wear that um, I'm so glad I was wearing it on the airplane recently because it just has you put some of the oils in it. And every now and then you can just... Breathe that in. You should be breathing in deep breaths anyways throughout your day. It's so good for your body. It's so good getting that oxygen to your brain and all that kind of stuff. But that breathing in the oils and the necklace, it just, it does do something to your moods. So, um, you know, you're probably hearing more and more about the essential oils today, which I'm very glad about. But that's going to give you a good environment to be working in and to be, you know, again, dealing with life's stress. Number seven is writing a gratitude journal. Now, sometimes when I suggest this, people go, oh, yeah, Trixie, I'm not a writer. Uh, that's okay. You can do it in small increments. What this is going to do, it's going to cause a creative flow for you. What I want to explain to you, and I feel very passionate about this, is that we are created to create. But what we do, our default, is survive. So you can choose that you either live your life in survival mode or you live it in creative mode. And I personally choose creative mode. I've had survival mode. Matter of fact, I had that for three years and I choose not to ever be there again. I choose to live in creativity. So you're always creating something new. So with your journal, you want to um, just jot down some things in your journal. My favorite number is 21. So I write down 21 things that I am thankful for. And no kidding, now I know this might sound a little obsessive, but there's some days where I do it in the morning and in the evening. So before I even get out of bed, my little list is sitting right next to my bedside. It's super easy. I don't have to worry about writing. I pick it up and I just read that list out loud. Now there's other days where I write it out. Last night, I was so grateful for something that happened in my life. I took my journal and I just poured my heart out. And it's a great way to really get that frequency raised. Writing puts you in a holding pattern at a high frequency. So when you write that out, that pattern's gonna hold for a long time to come. So once again, I just wanna encourage you to do that. One of the things that I teach for helping people with anxiety, again, something that I suffered from. I had panic attacks during that three-year period, um, even in the middle of the night, where I thought I was having a heart attack. Literally woke up, short breath, heart attack, the whole ball of wax. So I knew it was happening unconsciously, and I had to change that pattern. So one of the things that I suggest for anybody who suffers from anxiety is you have to shift your brain. You have to shift your thinking so it doesn't panic about what's happening in your body. 
something happened unconsciously, you woke up to it, you were like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe, my heart, this, and then you go into full panic mode because you're focusing on that. So what I do is I teach people to shift your thinking. Immediately when you realize that you're having a, a panic attack or an anxiety attack, I go in groups of five. Five things that you see, five things that you hear, five things that you smell, five things that you touch. Just go through your senses. And what, what I do immediately is, okay, so I, I see this coffee cup and, and it's, it's yellow and it's got this and I describe the coffee cup and then I move to the next thing that I see. I see this pen. This pen is a green pen. It has this writing on it that says da 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 da. And then I move to the next item and the next item. And what you're doing is you've shifted your brain to think about something else and to change the focus. It's very powerful. And I will tell you, when you condition yourself, it works. At any time, you can't sleep, you can't anything. You can go for a scavenger hunt in your mind of positive things. What's good in my life right now? What's good in my past? What accomplishments have I made? What am I proud of? What am I grateful for? Again, that grateful thing. Um, so you have to make it your intention to look for positive things in your life. Number eight water therapy. So water is an amazing gift from God. Light is the first source of pure energy. Water is the second, and it's very cleansing. So thinking about a bath, a shower, uh, swimming in a pool, being near a waterfall or a fountain, anything to do with water. Uh, I think about my three years of, of my tough time how much time I spent in the shower. I don't even want to know, but it was extremely helpful. It's where I would, you know, cry. It was is where I would yell. It was where I would pray. It was where I could just sit and be and let that water wash me. So it's just a really great place um, to raise your energy and to raise that, you know, your frequency. Okay, number nine is practice random acts of kindness. I love this one. I love it. I've made it a game. It's just so fun. What you're doing when you do this is you are projecting love, the purest form of love, and that radiates a high, high frequency vibration when you do that. So I want to make sure that you're doing these random acts of kindness without needing anything in return. So you do it just like it's a one-way street, a free flow. Now, I will tell you, sometimes I, I would tell my kids about something that I did. Um, you know, oh, there was a man that was on the, on the road and he had a little sign and I went to Arby's and bought him lunch and I brought it out to him or whatever. I might tell them that only because I want to be an example to my children of being good stewards. But I don't need to get on Facebook and go, oh, I just did this. And guess what? I did that. It's funny because I think I do, you know, sometimes people know and they're like, oh, you know what? She says that. Oh, think about all the things you don't know about that people are doing behind the scenes. That's where we're going to get our crown in heaven. That's where we're going to get our gifts and our and our, our Yahoo attaboys um, from, from our Heavenly Father. And that's just the way that I look at that. So going back to doing your random acts of kindness, if you're in a place where you really need to raise your frequency, then go volunteer somewhere. I've got a good friend who um, works in a soup kitchen. And I, I know he works it at least once a week, but I think he does some things throughout the rest of the week. And I will tell you, I know how fulfilling that is for him. I know how it just fills him and feeds him and it just exudes. And he he is running at a high frequency because of that. I also, um, a couple of years ago, created a clown character. I know, I know, hold it, hold it. Um, and where I have pink hair and my name is Lovebug and I'm in these parades and I'm doing charitable events and I absolutely love doing that. I love when somebody asks me to come to their charitable event or do some face painting for their kids with that, that clown costume because it allows me to 100% pour that love out on other people to see those kids' faces. And, and I love senior citizens. And I just, I love people. And just to see the joy that I can bring to people just through that, that's raising the frequency, my friend. So number 10 would be um, asking questions, uh, being uh, inquiring about things, be introspective, have wonderment. This will cause discovery, and that's going to cause um, your life to have a, a little bit more mm, different dynamics to it. 
So ask somebody, uh, you know, what do you do for a living? Or how many kids do you have? Or how long have you lived here? Or, you know, ask them some corny stuff. I love it when I ask somebody, you know, um, where do you see yourself in five years? People just go, um, well, gee, I never thought about it. And I said, well, if you could be doing anything you want, money's not an option, what would you be doing? Fun, fun questions to get things going. And again, it's just, I think what it's doing is it's just adding all these dynamics to your thinking and to your, your asking about people. And again, just raising your frequency. Number 11 is laugh and smile. This is contagious behavior. Make it a game. Oh my gosh. For so many years, I ran a company that took pictures of kids with Santa Claus. And it was uh, downtown Minneapolis at, at Dayton's in their eighth, eighth floor. And um, I'll tell you, I used to play this game on my way to work just to kind of keep myself busy or whatever. There was this long hallway that we had to walk down just to get to where the Santa Claus land was. And down this hallway, I mean, I would pass just uh, so many different people. And I did this experiment one time where I would walk by them and I would go, hey. And they'd look back at me and they'd go, hey. And I, and, or I'd go, hi. And they'd go, hi. And they just smile. They usually mimicked what I did. It was so fun. Or leaving and having the, the parking attendant, you know, being all grumpy and, you know, taking your money and all that kind of stuff. And I would just go, hey, how are you today? And I would just smile. They'd look at me and then they, and they just, it's like they just totally changed their behavior. And they'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I, yeah, I'm okay. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you can change somebody's mood just with your own frequency with your own vibration and a smile is just a really great way to do it. So do it on purpose. You know, quit being so doggone grumpy. You know, we got one shot at this life thing. And and the more time you're spending about thinking about all your problems and all your troubles, you could be adding joy to other people. So even if you don't feel like it, act like it and the feeling will follow. So just laugh and smile. Number 12, our last one is dedicate yourself to happiness. So you have to be intentional. You have to do it on purpose. There's no negative thinking. Now, okay, I'm not saying that bad things don't happen, okay? I probably have more bad things than you do or than other people do because I keep putting myself out there. You can't imagine when you decide to be, go public with anything or be in the front of the room for anything, you are literally under criticism, judgment, and yes, I have received hate mail. Not just once. <laughs> so, I mean, there's stuff coming at you at all times the more you put yourself out there. So you need to know ahead of time, how am I going to handle that? So if bad thoughts come in, don't resist them or block them. Handle them, acknowledge them, accept them, let them express themselves in a healthy way. So, you know, anger is not a sin. It's what we do in anger that's the sin. And I, I say that because I want you to consider so many people speak angry words because they're hurt or they're mad at something or things aren't going their way and they just vent like that. It's not, and they say, oh, I'm sorry, I just say those kinds of things. No, no, you have control over that. So by goodness, control yourself. And it's a skill that you need to learn. And when you learn it, your frequency will raise because you are in control of yourself. It's the last fruit of the spirit, self-control. I think it's last for a reason <laughs> because it's the hardest one to do, but it's necessary to keep that frequency high. Then you're gonna move to a healthy state. So you, you have the anger, go punch a pillow, go take a shower, you know, go write a letter and crumple it up and throw it away, whatever you gotta do. But you work that through you go through that forgiveness piece, which a lot of times will release it right there. And you only can control what you can control. And when you remember that and you stop trying to control other people, their responses, their words, their actions, that type of thing, it's a really freeing place to be. And when you're there, your frequency goes up, baby. So choose to increase your vibrations and really entrain with it because it's going to make it a habit. They start out as conscious things but they can end as unconscious responses. It's just the way you are at that point. So I hope that has helped you with uh, considering just improving your life. 
My, my goal and my mission is to add value to you. So I hope the information today has done that for you. And I just appreciate your time today. Thank you for letting me just be totally tricksy with you today. And we will see you next time.